uh, trying to fit in with this group of drug dealers who were buying drugs and bringing drugs from uh, Dallas, Texas to Shreveport and pushing them on the streets. And uh, a hotel room situation one night, drug deal went bad, and I was going to prove who I was and proved I fit and proved I belong, and this was going to be my identity. And uh, a drug deal went bad, and a fist fight broke out, and a young man was, was, several people were hurt, but one man was brutally beaten. And after he was left unconscious, a friend of mine and I uh, took him down the road to get him out of our hotel room, and that led to a robbery situation. My friend and the gentleman at that time came back conscious and uh, led to uh, my friend cutting this man's throat, and we left him for dead. And did you have anything to do with that throat cutting? Did you? I, I did, James. I was actually uh, I was actually the guy waiting in the vehicle, and when my friend never showed up, I went down there and I said, "What's going on?" And I saw they were both conscious, and and it was a struggle going on. And I went down there and I struck the young man with a with a big billy club and knocked him down and running away, and just uh, a drug stupor and a blur not living in a real world, a fallacy world. I, I said, just cut his throat. And uh, before I knew it, a friend of mine pulled out his knife and, and cut his throat. How old was the guy whose throat was cut? Probably. And uh, he was probably about 23, 24, 25. We left him in a ditch, went back to a hotel room. Uh, everybody began panicking, trying to figure out what to do. A pastor, Easter morning, sunrise service, setting up his chairs, Bossier City, Louisiana, Swan Lake Road, heard a young man gurgling and went down to the ditch. And long story short, uh, ended up calling the paramedics, calling the authorities. The friend saw the authorities, saw the friend in the white bed sheet from the hotel room, and uh, they rushed him to a hospital. His father was a leading surgeon in Shreveport, Louisiana, Dr. Bird, James Bird, sewed his son's throat back together, saved his son's life by his own admission, just a few centimeters away from, from slicing his jugular vein. And probably if the pastor hadn't stopped, he would have died anyway. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So it's a miracle he lived. And it was a miracle. And so that led to uh, about a 73-day jail arrest. And uh, I did the worst thing in the world. Well, I, I cried wolf, said I was innocent, had no part in it. And my parents did the worst thing in the world. They believed me and enabled me and came to my rescue. And 73 days later, I was walking free and feeling like I was invincible. But at that point, and, uh, and I believe many of the viewer audience would connect with this if, if they've ever fought an addiction, uh, my drug addiction spiraled out of control. I didn't have the friends anymore, didn't have the drug connections, and I just became a skid row drug addict very, very, very quickly, doing anything that it took. I got picked up for possession, guilty of distribution of cocaine within a matter of 90 days after my family spending lots of money and coming to my rescue. It's my second felony conviction at 19 years old. For over the next couple of years, uh, burned every bridge, told every lie, broke every heart, let everyone down, as you know drugs and alcohol will do. And uh, anyways, what ended up happening at 22 years old, I uh, went on a drug binge, a high-speed police chase, was arrested for a string of robberies with guns, without guns, ski masks, with, with <laughs> weapons of people, individual stores. Definitely not proud of any of it. And I was, it was just, you know, trying to, to feed an addiction that, that, had, that had me in its grasp. And so at 23 years old, I was arrested for the third and final conviction of first degree robbery after a high speed police chase and a helicopter, state troopers, Shreveport, Bossier City Police. And uh, that night I was hiding in the back of a shed, James, and, and I was tired of running. And I was, I was tired of living the life. And I, I didn't have the answers, but I turned myself in because I was ready for a change. And I went and turned myself in and I woke up a few days later and they took me to an arraignment and oblivious, uh, oblivious to my knowledge in the state of Louisiana, three felony convictions or three strikes and you're out. They call it a multi-bill. They marched me down to a courthouse, presented a piece of paper and they said, uh, if you won't make the taxpayer spend their money, you're on camera, you're guilty, you have two convictions, you're arrested now for five or six more felonies, uh, we'll do you a favor. We won't give you the multi-bill, which constitutes a life sentence in the state of Louisiana. We'll just give you 20 years. You'll serve every day if you'll sign the paper today. Uh, you'll come home in 20 years. And that was the experience that led me to go back to a jail, Cattle Parish Jail, laid down on the floor in a jail cell. No one to impress, no telephone calls to make, no one to reach out to, no lies to tell, no scams to run, no games to play for the first time in my life like Jacob. In Genesis 32, I had to lay down on the floor and I was all alone. And uh, I had to face the music, lay in the bed that I had made. And uh, now what I would refer to as a purging, a spiritual purging. I laid down on the ground 
And I just began to cry out to God and tell him how ashamed I was of what I had done to my family, to my father, to my stepfather, to my mother, to our reputation, to uh, family members that I had hurt. God, forgive me for being a murderer. God, forgive me for being a liar. God, forgive me for being a drug addict. And I just, it just felt like moments and I was just, just crying out to God. And I wasn't saying God save me and get me out of jail and give me a happy tomorrow. I was just saying, God, would you just forgive me for all the disappointment, for all the hurt. I'm just broken before you today.